once we have our claim, then now we need to pick some evidence to help to support our claim. So we need to back it up. We need to have something that is specific. If it's from a lab, then it needs to be quantitative. It has to have numbers, unless the only data you collected was qualitative. And then you could include that as well. <clears throat> but this isn't thoughts or feelings. This is evidence that's specific. It needs to be directly related to your claim. So you don't want to include data from a different experiment or from an unrelated experiment. It should be something that actually relates back to your claim. Sometimes in an experiment, you might collect a lot of data and some of it might be unrelated to your claim because you thought maybe it would impact something and it really didn't. So if it doesn't have an impact, then you don't use that to support your claim. You want to make sure it's only there. It should be able to be found in your data table when we're talking about a lab. Now, if we're talking about an article or a video, it could be something that the speaker said or something that the author wrote. It could be something that they pulled from another source as well. But once again, evidence is not thoughts, is not feelings. Evidence is specific and it's quantifiable. And so when you're watching a, a video or you're um, reading an article, you need to make sure that you're looking at the difference between is this something that they're just a statement that they're making about how they feel about something or are they making a statement about a fact about something that was observed so you need to make sure that you differentiate in there but once again no matter what it has to be directly related so <clears throat> in your claim if you're if you're trying to bring in evidence that someone else also thinks that this is true because they collected evidence as well you need to make sure that the evidence that you bring in actually still supports your claim so if you're using a website or a lecture or a textbook or something like that you need to bring be sure that what you bring in as evidence still goes along with your claim it shouldn't go parallel to it it shouldn't be oh well you know it's kind of the same subject it should still specifically support your claim definitions do not support a claim so please don't say that don't go out and find the definition of a word that's in your claim and say well i know that this is true because here's the definition of the word if that's the case then you didn't have a claim what you had was a definition. So we want to make sure that our evidence isn't general. We want to make sure it's very specific, once again, to our claim. And it should be very, it should be well related to our claim. So here's some examples. The Napa Valley earthquake originated one kilometer deep in the crust. Once again, it has to make sure, it still has to go along with the claim that you made, but this would be a good piece of evidence. Meter A was traveling at 300 kilometers per second and made a crater 150 feet deep. The ejecta, or the stuff that came out of the crater from meter A, was thrown 200 kilometers from the impact site. The average summer high temperature in San Francisco, California is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure in the magma chamber in Hawaii is 10 psi, or pounds per square inch. The pressure in Mount St. Helens magma chamber is 350 pounds per square inch. All good examples of data as long as they go along with your claim. So we're going to go back to your handout again and we're going to look at the statements that are in on your handout and we're going to do the star and non-star thing again. So you're going to take a few minutes. So I want you to read through those statements that are on there and decide if they're evidence. So we're looking at the same statements again. Um, statement number one, earthquakes occur every 24 years in Southern California. That would be a piece of evidence. Deserts occur in rain shadows of mountains. Not evidence. That one's a claim. The relative humidity is 85%. That one would be evidence. 
we go through and pick out our evidence out of here, if our score is 15%, this would be a piece of evidence. The rest of them are not. So once we picked out our evidence, now we need to actually support it and we need to use our reasoning and we need to put that into a paragraph or to a paper. So we wanted, it should always be in paragraph form. So it should never be like bullet points or anything like that. This is, this is a, a piece of writing that you're doing. So your first sentence is your thesis statement and your thesis is your claim. Your claim should always be that first statement. Um, we want to be upfront about here's what we're talking about. And then everything else in that paragraph, all your supporting sentences should provide either evidence or explanation of how that evidence supports the claim. So once again, we're going to piece our evidence in here and then in between the, our evidence, we're going to piece in some explanations. So here's an example. So the beginning question in this one, this was a lab that was conducted. If the yeast is given a smaller or larger amount of molasses, will it affect the cell count? The number of, of yeast cells that are in them. So one claim we received from our data from this experiment was that when a yeast culture is given more than five milliliters of molasses, the cell count increases. In the data, when we added eight milliliters of molasses instead of five milliliters, the cell count increased greatly. One piece of evidence is shown in our lab on day two, the cell count for the eight milliliter beaker was 67 and the control group was 11. The second piece of evidence from our lab was day three, the cell count for the eight milliliters was 1000 and the control group was 18. As quoted in the textbook, each population and ecosystem has a range of tolerance to variations in its physical and chemical environments. In our experiment, the population in this evidence represents our cells. When they go out of their tolerance level, they change physically and chemically. According to the graphs above in the lecture given to us, the claim is supported through the evidence of cell division. The last piece of evidence that supports this claim is from the internet. One website states, if the nutrient supply is restricted and the rate of increase in cell size is slowed, the time period between cell divisions is increased. The same goes for an increase in the nutrient supply. When the nutrient supply is greater, the time period between cells dividing is decreased. What I'd like you to do is on your handout, it asks you, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? This is not, I'm going to tell you right up front, this is not a perfect example. They did not do everything right in here. They did do some things right, and they did do some things wrong. So I want you to go through and kind of try to pick out, and we'll leave it up on the screen. Go through and pick out what you think they did right. Pick out one thing you think they did right, and one thing you think they did wrong. Now what I'd like you to do is share with a partner next to you your thing that you think they did right and your thing that you think they did wrong. So the, one of the things they did right, uh, one thing they did right was everything, all the evidence that they collected and everything all went back to their beginning question. Now their beginning question really should have said if they, if they, if they changed the amount of molasses, then they should have said it will either increase or decrease the cell count. So they should have given it a specific direction. Um, <clears throat> for their for their beginning question. So that way when they had their claim, they could have come a little bit more closely to that. But what they claimed was that if they gave it more than five milliliters of molasses, the cell count increased. Now, they put in five milliliters, so that makes it not a claim, right? They should have just said if they increase the amount of molasses, the more molasses or the more food yeast cells have, then the greater the cell count will be. So that would have made it into a claim. They could have changed that into being claimed. They did take specific data out of their data table 
to show that the higher levels of molasses had um, greater cell counts. So it did relate back to it, and that was well explained. When they got down into their evidence that came from other sources, though, their their reasoning part was a little bit was a little bit um, lacking. So in here, where they said they came out of the textbook and they said each population in the ecosystem has a great a range of tolerance to variations in its physical and chemical environment, what they really needed to say was so we changed their physical environment because we gave them more food, and that changed their population. So they didn't really bring it back around. So you need to be careful when you're pulling evidence from somewhere that your explanation shows how that quote or that piece of information actually proves that your claim is true. Okay, so they were almost there in this one. Um, Wikipedia is not a good source. Please don't use that when you're, able, when you're going out on the internet for things. Um, but this one was almost there, but they did do some things that could have been a little bit better. So, already said those. So what I want you to remember though is that you have to prove your claim through evidence. It has to be specific, it has to be number oriented, and it really has to be explained. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in station three about how you actually structure your paper and, and practicing doing that.